Readings from the Liturgical Year by Dom Prosper Guéranger Wednesday, the fourth week of Lent This day is called the Feria of the Great Scrutiny, because in the Church of Rome, after the necessary inquiries and examinations, the list of the catechumens who were to receive baptism was closed. The station was held in the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls, both because of the size of the building and also in order to honor the Apostle of the Gentiles by offering him these new recruits, which the church was about to make from paganism. The Collect O God, who givest to the righteous the reward of their good works, and by fasting pardon to sinners, have mercy on thy suppliants, that the acknowledgment of our guilt may procure us the remission of our sins. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The First Epistle Lesson from the Prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36, verses 23 through 28. Thus saith the Lord God, I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the Gentiles, which you have profaned in the midst of them. That the Gentiles may know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord of hosts, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the Gentiles, and will gather you together out of all the countries, and will bring you into your own land. And I will pour upon you clean water, and you shall be cleansed from all your filthiness, and I will cleanse you from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart, and put a new spirit within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in the midst of you, and I will cause you to walk in my commandments, and to keep my judgments and do them. These magnificent promises, which are to be fulfilled in favor of the Jewish people, as soon as God's justice shall have been satisfied, are to be realized firstly in our catechumens. These are they that have been gathered together from all the countries of the Gentile world, in order that they may be brought into their own land, the Church. A few days hence, and there will be poured upon them that clean water, which shall cleanse them from all the defilements of their past idolatry. They shall receive a new heart and a new spirit. They shall be God's people forever. The Second Epistle Lesson from the Prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, verses 16 through 19. Thus saith the Lord God, Wash yourselves, be clean, take away the evil of your devices from my eyes. Cease to do perversely, learn to do well. Seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge for the fearless, defend the widow. And then come and accuse me, saith the Lord. If your sins be as the scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. And if they be red as crimson, they shall be white as wool. If you be willing, and will hearken to me, you shall eat the good things of the land, saith the Lord Almighty. It is to her penitence that the church addresses these grand words of Isaiah. There is a baptism also prepared for them, a laborious baptism indeed, but still one that has the power to cleanse their souls from all their defilements, if only they receive it with sincere contrition and be resolved to make atonement for the evil they have committed. What could be stronger than the language used by God in making his promise of forgiveness? He compares the change he will make in the soul of a repentant sinner to that of scarlet and crimson becoming white as snow. The unjust is to be made just, the darkness is to be turned into light, the slave of Satan is to become the child of God. Let us rejoice with our glad mother, the Holy Church, and redoubling the fervor of our prayer and penance, let us induce our Lord to grant that on the Easter feast the number of conversions may surpass our hopes. The Gospel Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 38. At that time Jesus, passing by, saw a man that was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who hath sinned? this man or his parents, that he should be born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground, and made clay out of the spittle, and spread the clay on his eyes, and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Silo, which is interpreted, sent. 
He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they who had seen him before, that he was a beggar, said, Is this not he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. But others said, No, but he is like him. But he said, I am he. They said, therefore, to him, How are thine eyes opened? He answered, That man that is called Jesus made clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said to me, Go to the pool of Silo and wash. And I went and washed, and I see. And they said to him, Where is he? He saith, I know not. They bring him that had been blind to the Pharisees. Now it was the Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Again, therefore, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. But he said to them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some, therefore, of the Pharisees said, This man is not of God, who keepeth not the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was division among them. They say, therefore, to the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that hath opened thy eyes? And he said, He is a prophet. The Jews then did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and had received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight, and asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How doth he now see? His parents answered them, and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how he now seeth we know not, or who hath opened his eyes we know not. Ask himself, He is of age, let him speak for himself. These things his parents said because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed among themselves that if any man should confess him to be Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore did his parents say, He is of age, ask him. They therefore called the man again that had been blind, and said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He saith then to them, If he be a sinner, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. They then said to him, What did he to thee? How did he open thy eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you have heard. Why would you hear it again? Will you also become his disciples? They reviled him therefore, and said, Be thou his disciple. But we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as to this man, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said to them, Why, herein is a wonderful thing, that you know not from whence he is, and he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God doth not hear sinners, but if a man be a servant of God, and doth his will, him he heareth. From the beginning of the world it hath not been heard that any man hath opened the eyes of one born blind. Unless this man were of God, he could not do anything. They answered and said to him, Thou wast born holy in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, said to him, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, I believe, Lord, and falling down, he adored him. In the early ages of the church, baptism was frequently called illumination, because the sacrament confers supernatural faith whereby man is enlightened with the divine light. It was on this account that there was read on this day the history of the cure of the man born blind, for it is the figure of man's being enlightened by Christ. This subject is frequently met with in the paintings in the catacombs and on the base reliefs of the ancient Christian monuments. We are all born blind. Jesus, by the mystery of his incarnation, figured by this clay which represents our flesh, has merited for us the gift of sight. But in order that we may receive it, we must go to the pool of him that is divinely sent, and we must be washed in the water of baptism. Then shall we be enlightened with the very light of God, and the darkness of reason will disappear. The humble obedience of the blind man, who executes with the utmost simplicity all that our Savior commands for him, is an image of our catechumens, who listen with all docility to the teachings of the Church, 
for they too wish to receive their sight. The blind man of the gospel is, by the care of his eyes, a type of what the grace of Christ works in us by baptism. Let us listen to the conclusion of our gospel, and we shall find that he is also a model for those who are spiritually blind, yet would wish to be healed. Our Savior asks him, as the church asked us on the day of our baptism, Dost thou believe in the Son of God? The blind man, ardently desiring to believe, answers eagerly, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Faith brings the weak reason of man into union with the sovereign wisdom of God, and puts us in possession of his eternal truth. No sooner had Jesus declared himself to be God than the simple-hearted man falls down and adores him. He that from being blind is blessed with bodily sight is now a Christian. What a lesson was here for our catechumens. At the same time, it reminds us of the frightful perversity of Jesus' enemies. He is shortly to be put to death, he the just by excellence. And it is by the shedding of his blood that he is to merit for us and for all mankind the cure of that blindness in which we were all born, and which our personal sins have tended to increase. Glory, then, love, and gratitude be to our divine physician, who, by uniting himself to our human nature, has prepared the ointment whereby our eyes are cured of their infirmity, and strengthened to gaze for all eternity on the brightness of the Godhead. Bow down your heads to God. May the ears of our mercy, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy servants, and in order to obtain the effect of our petitions, grant that we may ask what is pleasing to thee. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.